Hello, and welcome back to Week 11 Preview for God Bless Face Football. Week 11? We're on Week 11 now. Why does the NFL season just feel like it gets over in the blink of an eye? Because we enjoy it so much. Maybe. I enjoy winning, especially each week in fantasy. Uh, and also the Bears won last week, so that's a huge plus. Plus, your Vikings look like they haven't skipped a beat with Josh Dobbs as their starting quarterback. So, uh, all things considered, yeah, you're right. You know, when you're when you're winning, you're having fun. It's all right if the season goes fast. I just wish it uh, would slow down a bit for me, selfishly. I agree. I agree. We're still in first place in our league. Yeah, buddy. Let's give an update. Let's give a standings update for everybody out there. Standings already. So it goes us, Jacob, Colin, mm. Schmatter. We're all seven and three. Us, Jacob, Colin, and Schmatter. So Schmatter is not here anymore. Schmatter's back in Minnesota. Yes. And Colin drafted Kenny Pickett first overall or in the first round. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, it's pretty good on Colin's part, I guess. I don't know if that uh, has been a mixture of just injuries panning out for the kid or if it's, you know, maybe he knows how to draft and, you know, we just gave him a ton of a ton of ish for it. Now, Kenny Pickett isn't the guy, but George Pickens is a good pick and he picked him in the second round. But who are some of his other guys on that team that, um, or, or at least difference makers. Any should he not be seven and three? No, he has Alvin Kamara, which he didn't have him for the first few games. Yeah, but Kamara's a beast. Roshan Johnson, yeah, not great. I know that all too well. That experiment hasn't gone well so far. Chris Olave, Olave. So he's got he's got the entire Saints team, and he has the entire Steelers team. Yeah, and then he has. Yeah, he's doubled. He's flexing a tight end in. Right now. I, I've had to do that though. And there's reason for that with your wide receivers and runners on the buy. Uh, I have put two tight ends in. now one of my tight ends is Taysom Hill. Who is he a tight end? Is he not a tight end? He's just like the utility infielder on your team. And then I started Jake Ferguson two weeks ago. And well, the Cowboys have been lighting the world on fire right now. Now they have had some easier opponents as of late, but Dak Prescott looks really good right now, putting a ton of points up in the fantasy column. And that in turn leads to Jake Ferguson getting uh, a decent point production. So all in all, uh, I'll give the okay symbol to that man. Well, we this week had Dak Prescott and CD lamb together. So that really helped us. That's big time. That's big time. And what's big time this week is we get James Connor, is I didn't play him last week because he was just coming back off of IR. Um, and then Devon Achan comes back. A Chan. So we're able to probably probably gonna drop Miles Sanders. That's fine. You know, Miles Sanders hasn't uh hasn't been given the workload that I predicted him to get. I don't think it's a lack of production as much as it's just Carolina doesn't run the football well at all. No. And Chuba. Chuba, I okay. So obviously, this podcast takes place in Nebraska. Chuba Purdy is one of the quarterbacks at Nebraska, but Chuba Hubbard is the running back in the NFL. And I talk about Chuba all day, which led me to say Chuba instead of Chuba. But anytime I get that mixed up, that's the reason. Now, Chuba gives you, I, I, I think, a better look out of the pass than Miles Sanders, even though Miles Sanders did have some of that at Penn State and transitioned that over to the NFL. I still think Hubbard has an edge there, and so they're giving him more reps because of that. Yeah, for Miles season, Sanders just isn't it. He's Miles just not Sanders it. has 20 catches on the season, and he's rushed 71 times for 224 yards. Mm, not great. So and only one touchdown, so that doesn't really help you in fantasy either. No, so, yeah, we have some guys on buys this week. The Saints, as you uh, kind of alluded to with um, – Collins roster. Uh, he'll have to deal with Olave and Kamara on buys this week. I believe the Colts are also on a buy this week. So no Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman, Josh Downs. And then there's at least one other team. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh, the uh, Falcons are on a buy this week for sure. Cause I know Drake London and Kyle Pitts won't be, won't be uh, eligible for playing this week. And Kyle Pitts has been really, really good as of late. Finally. It's about time he started to heat up, and uh, we're seeing him 
maybe pan out to what the fourth overall pick is supposed to be uh, when you draft a guy that high. So uh, some buys this week, some top guys. How are you um, shifting guys up the lineup? Well, we'll get into uh, waiver wire Tuesday, even though it's Wednesday that they go through, but Tuesday's your final day to get them in. Waiver wire Tuesday and some plays that we like here soon on the show. But yeah, for me and other fantasy leagues, I am I'm doing pretty well. I'm I'm six and four in a, in my family league. I started out strong though, and I think I've lost the last two weeks. Now I've dealt with with you know, some dangerous bye weeks, AJ Brown and Travis Kelsey were on buys last week. And now this week I'm down Taylor and Kamara in this league. So I I've had some struggles there. I've also had some quarterback struggles with Anthony Richardson going down early in the year. I think yeah. I've talked about that before, but there is a league where I've been like sneaking wins. Uh, and that is my OG dynasty league. I'm eight and two in first place in that league. And I should not be based on the injuries I have. I lost Nick Chubb earlier in the year. I've, I've been down David Montgomery most of the year. And last week I had to forego Tyree kill and AJ Brown and Jalen hurts did not come away with the W, but it's okay. You know what? We figure it out. We regroup. We're finding ways to win football games. And this week, um, I couldn't be happier with starting Jordan Addison next to Tyreek Hill and AJ Brown. Yeah, Josh Dobbs is lighting the world on fire. I would like to formally apologize to Josh Dobbs. I tweeted saying, why did we do this? I am sorry. I was not familiar with your game. Hey, you can't, uh, you can't really question a guy that is smart enough to be an astronaut. See, I didn't know that information at the time. Yeah, well, you should do your research, Vikings fan. I should have. And now... You know, he's putting us crazy enough that we could be in the playoffs. Do not start Chicago's defense this week. I started them last week against Carolina, and I just noticed that they played Detroit. I don't think anybody wants that. Nope. I was seeing the commander's defense. They play. Who do they play? Yeah, you know what? Let's go into some some available defenses right now. Minnesota's available. Jacksonville, Cincinnati is available. If we look at percentage owned, you get the Vegas Raiders, the Miami Dolphins are available. Now, I think an interesting defense um, would be Detroit against Chicago. Detroit's actually not very highly owned, but they offer a ton of a, a ton of nice young pieces that I would be okay with buying in. And you're right. Washington's defense is available in most leagues and they play the giants. And if Tommy DeVito is your, the, a team starting quarterback, I mean, you could, you could play with a blindfold on and probably still only give up seven points to Tommy DeVito. Yeah. I, even then the Raiders, who's their quarterback right now? Raiders, Aiden O'Connell. Yep. So play the defense, whoever the Raiders play. But Aiden O'Connell's been playing okay. Uh, the Raiders play Miami. Miami's yeah. defense is good, but I think I would lean Detroit if Badgent is still is still the guy. Uh, I I think they ruled out Fields already for this week. I'm pretty sure they did. So Badgent being the guy, it, it would be it would be between Detroit and Washington for me. Uh, the game is in a dome in Detroit. It's at home. Uh, the game is in. Is it in New York? Oh, I don't even want to assume. Um, but what I do know is I, I like Aiden Hutchinson and I love the way he gets to the quarterback. So I will probably pick up Detroit's defense. Justin Fields is questionable as of now. Yeah, I could have sworn I saw some update yesterday saying that he still wasn't going to be ready this week. Justin Fields. Inactive for week 10 against the Panthers. One of the five things Iberflu said earlier this week ended up coming true. If Fields and Deeds returns for week 11, it will be for a road date in Detroit. Um, that told me nothing. <laughs> it's all right, though. You know what? If Justin Fields comes back, I think uh, I'll be happy as a Bears fan because I'd love to see if he has the same second half as he did last year. Because if he does, then I think the Bears have... Um, a lot to think about this off season. If they go after a new quarterback or if they write out Justin Fields, if you have the number one pick and you have your choice of Caleb Williams and some, whether it's, you know, Bo Nix, Michael Penix. Um, I know I'm missing. Well, Drake may. Ah, 
it's hard. It's hard. It's, I, I would hate to be in the, the, the situation that the bears are in, but the Justin Fields experiment hasn't worked out more than may, maybe uh, in, in spurts. And you can't get to the playoffs with a quarterback that works in spurts. Is it a pass thing? Maybe. Is it a read defense thing? Maybe. Is it a pass protection thing? Maybe. Maybe Justin Fields isn't at fault and he just doesn't have enough time to make a play. Who knows? Um, but if you have the opportunity at Caleb Williams, I think a fresh start is, you know, kind of where most people sit at the end of the day, then the inconsistent option that you could get out of your current quarterback. I mean, it'd be kind of crazy because this year, all the quarterbacks that got hurt, you know, maybe those guys are out next year and you can trade them for even more picks and build that line. And you know what? Maybe you retain Justin Fields, right? As you said, and then you, you dump them off to, to another team that is looking for a, a a, a good starter. Like Justin Fields is a good starting quarterback. It's just I don't know how many wins he gives you in Chicago. And Chicago's a hard place to win. Yeah. And not just because it's a bad football team, but because it's a bad environment. Like it, it it's a tough environment to play in when you're up north. Yeah. NFC North is hard to play in. If you know only the Packers are playing outside, Minnesota plays inside, so it doesn't really matter. Detroit plays inside, but the Bears play outside. But it's just it's more the the atmosphere the energy of soldier field just isn't what it used to be. And it's, it's just a hard place to play. Uh, sure. You know, people say that all the time about college stadiums. Uh, you go to Piscataway in basketball, like that's a tough place to play. You go to Nebraska for football. That's a tough place to play. Um, it's a tough place to be the starting quarterback at, which if anybody's been following Husker football, they know that based on, you know, just, just, a teensy bit of research on somebody's post on Twitter and then all the comments that flow underneath it. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's about that time. I think, I think Justin Fields. I'm going to ride, I, I'm going to ride the quarterback, whoever it is as a fan of the Chicago bears. Like I will still wear my Justin Fields Jersey if he's there. And I won't be upset if the bears don't draft another quarterback this draft, but if they do draft another quarterback, I also won't cry over the fact that Justin Fields isn't there anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes like sense. I, I'm kind of at the point of, just make it work from a fantasy point of view, make it work from a team point of view, make it work. Like Justin Fields will be fine in fantasy. He'll have his weeks, but he also has some, some pretty piss poor weeks like Trevor Lawrence this week. And Trevor Lawrence did not play football very well. Sometimes I wonder if his, he has a lot of talent, a lot, but I don't know if his talent guarantees you a win Not because with, this year it seems like the defense is guaranteeing guaranteeing more wins than trevor lawrence they also put the 49ers so you have to put a little bit of maybe right maybe we saw the 49ers lose three straight weeks in a row this is true maybe trevor lawrence and the jaguars are supposed to be better than i, I would guess two out of the three losses that san francisco picked up in those weeks you want to take a peek you want to know what San Francisco's, what the San Francisco 49ers schedule looked like during that time? Now, the Browns have a really good defense. They lost to the Browns. They also lost to the Vikings. And Which the Vikings fluke. is like a, and eh, probably, if you're the 49ers, you shouldn't lose to the Vikings. Yeah. And then the Bengals, who were starting to play hot, but also just lost to the Texans last week. So you know that they, and, and all season long, we know how they're susceptible. Jeez, susceptible to losing. Yeah. It's, I mean, that game was really good though. CJ Stroud is, he's leading the league in passing yards and he's a rookie. And CJ Stroud is the man. Yeah. He, um, here, a question was asked to me the other day, if you had your choice between, um, you know, quarterbacking the team in Carolina, like as Bryce young, you know, number one pick, I still think Bryce young IQ off the charge, uh, charts, extremely talented, uh, versus the situation you have in, in Houston. And I actually think if Bryce Young was in Houston, he'd be just as successful. I think Houston's just a, a better built operation. And I think D'Amico Ryans is uh, the guy I'd rather have uh, being the so-called general uh, of of the team, of the organization. Frank Reich has shown that he he can be a good coach, but also has shown that he can be a pretty bad coach. Is it easier to play in Houston? Probably. It's probably easier to play 
in Houston, Texas than it is in uh, is it South Carolina? Is that where they play? Do they play in North? I think they play in North Carolina, right? Carolina. They play in Raleigh. Yeah. Um, it, CJ Stroud just looks awesome. He looks great. He looks comfortable. He is showing me early that he can separate himself from the rest and be a quarterback that leads you to, on a ton of game winning drives. And that is a gene that's not so easily picked up on. Plus, he's just a great human being. He's just somebody that is really likable. So he'll make uh, he'll make Houston happy for a long time, as long as he avoids some massage parlors. <laughs> With that, we're going to go into uh, some waiver wire additions. Let's do it. So... With the injury to Alexander Mattinson, Ty Chandler for the Vikings, he's 2.8% owned. Mm. Um, yeah, Cam Akers going down was a blow for that team, too. That was, he was just about, I, he was, he was about right to there. pop off. He was right there. But, yeah, Ty Chandler actually, uh, he he's 9% rostered in, in Yahoo formats. And look, he's the guy, right? Yeah, he's going to be the guy because I think Mattinson has a concussion. He does. So he'll be out at least this week. I think Ty Chandler's going to start getting split those carries. Right. Even he even took over the carries before Mattson went out. And 15 for 45 isn't a stat line that gets you all warm and fuzzy on the inside, but especially on a week, if you're running backs on a buy, like if you are a Kamara owner or a Taylor owner, or um, even a B. John Robinson owner or a Tyler Algier owner, Ty Chandler could be, somebody to burn your waiver on because you know he's going to get you starting running back value even if it means less of a workload yeah so then i'm gonna give you a choice here okay devin singletary or keaton mitchell uh devin singletary devin singletary blew up this week but he's also been blowing up it's not just a fluke week devin singletary in the past four games he has in is this a pbr league i think i'm in a pbr league what what league am i in here this oh this is the extreme PPR league. <laughs> uh, this one okay so I'll just go off basic stats. Uh, Devin Singletary over the last four games, twelve for fifty eight. He had a one catch for four yards. Uh, that was um, that's a that's a decent fantasy total. Uh, didn't have a touchdown, but that's okay. He went ten of thirty the next week, thirteen of twenty six the next week. He's already slotting in for more carries than Damian Pierce, and then he blew up for thirty carries. Last week against Cincinnati, went for 150 yards and a touchdown. I prefer him over Keaton. Yeah, Damian Pierce even has an ankle injury too. So that's even more of a reason to start him this week. And look, Keaton Mitchell looked really good for the Ravens too. And, you know, he has looked okay for them o over the last couple of weeks. But if last week is any inclination of how many touches he'll get this week, it still doesn't like, it, it doesn't make me jump. It, the, the, that stuff doesn't jump off the page, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, he went for nine and 138. Like, that just that just tells me right there you had chunk plays that got you to 138. He went for three for 34 last week. Yes, again, he, he only rushed three times and got 30 yards. That's over 10 yards a carry, but that's a chunk play guy, yeah. right? And I don't want to rely on a chunk play with the Ravens when I'm facing off against a Cincinnati team that may be more of a shootout than a run fest. That makes sense. And then going on to receivers, Noah Brown for the Texans. Like versus anybody else. Like, is it, do you just want me to talk about Noah Brown? <laughs> I was going to say Elijah Moore. Um, okay. Well, gosh, I don't love Elijah Moore. Noah Brown ha has really popped off the last two weeks and you heard his name a ton last week. And you know, what's funny about that. And it, it's just because Houston throws the ball all over the map mm -hmm. and CJ Stroud does a great job of putting it where people aren't. If CJ Stroud keeps throwing for 350, 450 yards. Yeah. I'm taking Noah Brown over PJ Walker to Sean Watson. Yeah. Right. And Noah Brown having those numbers, eight targets, seven catches for 172 comes on the same day that tank Dell puts up. What? Oh, this stat line. 14 targets, six catches, 56 yards, and a touchdown. The week before that, he had 114 yards, two touchdowns, and Noah Brown also had over 100 yards that week before. Yeah. CJ Stroud likes throwing the football to anybody. He doesn't just target one guy. Isn't Nico Collins out too? And Nico Collins is out, correct. Okay. So that's just another reason that provides um, 
provides a little more juice than Elijah Moore. Now he wasn't a now. Let's just not, let's not make that claim just yet. Nico Collins could come back in like three days. Yes, uh, but his status last week was out because of his calf injury. Houston didn't seem to miss him. So it, no. what's the harm in keeping him out one more week if he needs it? Uh, but just monitor that injury. I still think Noah Brown's a, a slot of pray, uh, play over Elijah Moore. Well, with that, we'll go into our game pick. Let's do it. You're 500. You're 14 and 14. Yeah, watch out, baby. Cam is 12 and 16. I also won my pickums last week. You did? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. of you, your Bears pick. Huh? My Bears pick. Yep. Yes, sir. Then I'm sitting at 19 and 9. So this week I have, I believe it's five games again. Bengals Ravens. You have 19 wins. So if I go five and oh, I could tie you if you go on five. Is that, yes. is that what that means? Mm-hmm. That's math. That's math. And all right, we just math. Okay. Um, hit me with it again. Bengals Ravens. Bengals Ravens, a game we just got done talking about. They are the Thursday night game. I will take. I just like the way the Ravens have been playing. I'm going to take the Ravens. I'm going to take the Bengals. Oh, we got to flip a coin for Cam. Yes, we do. Hey, Siri. For those that don't know, before we flip this coin, heads is home, tails is away. Hey, Siri. Flip a coin. Tails. He's going Bengals. Next one. Steelers, Browns. Ooh. Again, I love the Browns defense. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with the Browns. I'll take the home team again. I will go with the Steelers. Oh, baby. You're letting me come back here. These are all dubs I'm giving out. We have to make it, you know, interesting, don't we? Hey, Siri, flip a coin. Tails again. Steelers are the pick for Cam. Cam out, by the way. He does so many things um, producing-wise across our network, so he couldn't be here again today, but that's okay. That's okay. Siri's here for him. Raiders, Dolphins. I'm going the Dolphins. Yeah, that's an easy one for me, too. I will take the Miami Dolphins. They are what, 12 point favorites? Yeah. Hey, Siri, flip a coin. It's, it's Tails this time. Raiders for Cam, which is funny because we make fun of that play right now and then the Raiders are going to win. Yeah. Another, this game is always interesting every time they play Jets and the Bills. It is. And it's it, extremely interesting after seeing Buffalo fire their OC mm-hmm. after. Um, <laughs> I mean, just Buffalo should be so much better than they are. What's up with Josh Allen? I mean, he's always been a turnover machine, but he, at least the Bills were able to win football games when he turned it over. I will take the Buffalo Bills. There's, th- You got to find a way to win one of these, right? I'm going to take the Bills. You're going to go to the Jets? I think I'm going to go to the Jets. So I like the Jets defense. I don't love their offense. And Zach Wilson turns the football over uh, just as much. Yeah. I don't. I'm going to give Cam the Bills. That's not how this works. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He'll probably get the Bills anyway. Let's be honest. Hey, Siri. Flip a coin. Tails. He's going the other way with the Jets. Tails never fails, according to Siri today. And then the game of the week, in my opinion, Eagles Chiefs. Game of the week, Eagles and Chiefs. Hum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum. This game is at Arrowhead, I believe. It is. Chiefs coming off a bye. The Warhorse Sportsbook line is minus three in favor of the home team, but the Eagles are also coming off a bye. I wonder what Hurts' status is. Questionable with that knee. Always seems to play through it. Eagles, very well-coached team. So are the Chiefs. But the Chiefs' secondary is garbage. Yes, but the Chiefs' defense has been playing really well. And Mahomes is one of those guys that I don't think loses this one at home. It's going to be like a 20-17 win for whoever wins this game. It's going to be... If the Eagles win, though, it's going to be by more than that. Yeah. If the Eagles win, it'll be by like eight. You know what? Just because I like the underdog, I'll go with the Eagles here. Okay. I have the Chiefs. Uh, and we'll give Cam uh, the Chiefs because that's his favorite team. That is his team. So pretty much looking at this here, me and Cam have the same picks for one, two, three, four games. This is where I come back. 
This is where you come back. It's where I make my rise. It's going to be an interesting week. How many more weeks do we have buys? Like uh, bye week should uh, close out about week 12. Yeah, so next week. Wow. NFL bye weeks. Well, way to ask me a question I'm not prepared for. Week 14, Arizona, Washington. Big bye week during week 13. Ravens, Bills, Bears, Raiders, Vikings, Giants. Jeez. Big one. I remember there. week 13 was like week seven and week 13 are always the. The more, bulky ones. The bulky ones. Mm-hmm. Well, I like where we're at today. I like. Uh, I, I think the advice that we gave is is good. It's solid. It's uh, a constant reminder that fantasy. Uh, this this is uh, if if I'm in my Scott Hansen voice right now. This is the witching hour. Uh, we are past week ten. These next five six weeks are where wins become losses and losses become wins. Even if you're in second to last place, you can go on a streak. You can win four in a row, and boom, you're right there in the playoff hunt. These are where your games and, and, and wins matter. If you haven't been focusing on fantasy over the last few weeks, yeah, revert back. Take 30 minutes at work. Check it. Your boss will be fine with it. You can say Andrew Andrew said it was okay. Yeah, make sure you just set your lineups. You know, look on Thursday. Don't do it on Sunday. Now you can get lucky like my roommate who checked his lineup on Sunday Night Football and came back and beat me. We're not going to talk about that. I've heard enough about it. But with that, that's our Week 11 preview. God bless fantasy football. Again, make sure you check your lineups. Yeah, buddy.